The amount of substance exam questions in A-level chemistry can be very challenging. They usually come with lots of data and they are very often set in a practical context, which can be quite overwhelming. It's just as important to consider your layout in answering these exam questions as it is to consider what the final answer might be. This is my third video in a series of tutorials where I'm going to be taking you through a full walkthrough after you have a go of some very tough amount of substance style calculations. So have a go at this question and come back for the full walkthrough. Either screenshot it or check out the link in the video description. For this particular exam question, what I'd like you to think about is your layout. How are you going to present your answer to make sure it's clear to an examiner? So here we are with the walkthrough and as I mentioned earlier, I want you to focus on layout. This includes what I'm currently jotting down alongside the question. If I was presented with this question in an exam, I would make a little sketch like this one, which simplifies the stages and includes little sketches of practical kit to help me visualize the process. In this scenario, 27.823 grams of hydrated sodium carbonate is added to enough deionized water to make a one decimeter cubed solution. That's a thousand centimeters cubed. 25 centimeters cubed of this big solution is then used in a titration against 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed HCl, giving a mean titer of 48.8 centimeters cubed. The goal is to determine the number of waters of crystallization in the original formula, most likely using molar mass, but I've got to get all the way through the question first. How we get there then starts with the hydrochloric acid and then walking through all the stages in the reverse direction. The moles of HCl required in the titration is 4.88 times 10 to the power of negative 3 mol. And I've got that by doing moles equals concentration times volume using the HCl data of 0.1 mol per decimeter cubed and a volume of 48.8 centimeters cubed, as you can see on screen now. Next up, I can see using the balanced reaction equation that the ratio between the HCl and the Na2CO3, the sodium carbonate, is 2 to 1. So if I divide the HCl moles that I've just calculated by 2, I'll have the number of moles of the Na2CO3, the sodium carbonate, in the 25 centimeter cubed sample used in the titration. That gives me a value of 2.44 times 10 to the power of negative 3 mol. Next up is the big scale up. I need to scale up my number of moles from the 25 centimeter cubed sample of the solution up to the big 1000 centimeter cubed solution. There are two ways to do this. Either just determine the ratio between the volumes, which in this case is going to be times 40, or for a method which will work every time, regardless of what volumes you're given, what I like to teach is that you multiply the value of the moles in the smaller sample by the to volume over the from volume. So for example, here I would multiply by 1000 over 25, because then I'm going to the 1000 centimeter cubed solution from the 25 centimeter cubed solution here. The choice is yours. Either way, the value of moles in the large one decimeter cubed solution is 0 0.0976 mol. Nearly there, now I know the number of moles in the big one decimeter cubed solution, I can find the molar mass of my full hydrated sodium carbonate formula using mass divided by moles. So that's going to be the 27.823 grams divided by the 0 0.0976 mol that I just calculated in the previous stage. That means that the molar mass of my full hydrated sodium carbonate formula is 285.1 grams per mole. This still isn't quite the value of XH2O though, is it? So what I need to do next is, since this value represents the whole formula, including the dot XH2O, I can subtract from this the known molar mass using a periodic table for just the sodium carbonate, which is 106. That gives me a remaining molar mass value, which must be by the XH2O, of 179.1 grams per mole. I then divide this by 18, which is the molar mass of water, and I can determine that my value of X, so the number of waters of crystallization to the nearest whole number, was 10. Thank you very much for watching. If you did find the video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could leave it a like before you go and consider subscribing to stay updated. If you did happen to actually miss the first video in the series, then there's a link on screen now alongside links to my other content on my channel to support your revision. Until next time, happy revising.